What's going on, guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com. I'm joined also with Coach Mark and Coach Jimmy in today's episode, where we're going to be sharing with you guys how to get better workouts, how to really maximize not only just the mind-muscle connection, but most importantly, how to train your body properly. And at the end, we're also going to be talking about how to get through those, those nasty plateaus in case you're not progressing. So, we're going to be talking fast. We're going to be making sure that this episode is also geared to, let's say, a, a Heartletics member or maybe a, a new client that's getting signed in where they want to learn how to get from early on off the gate better results and really how to start, you know, progressing with their health and fitness journey. We're going to be sharing with them, you know, the big tips in this one. For starters, though, Jimmy, let's hear some wins, brother. Oh, we got some wins. We're going to go through a few real quick so we can get right to our uh, the meat. Uh we got Scott Carlin. He had a solid week. He's down four pounds week over week, down a full inch in the waist. His body fat percentage is down 0.8%. That's good job, Scott. Nice work, Scott. We have Rob Delson. My big win for this week was perseverance. Powered through craziness and stress with the help of the coaches and the positivity of this community. Ended up having a great week, down another two pounds. Trust the process. Awesome, Rob. That. That's awesome. I love that. Great win, Rob. That's great. Uh, Santo, new coach. What's new coach. <laughs> uh, coach Joe always says Monday is the best day of the week. I don't know. Sunday is giving it a run for its money. All the wins and gains in here today are incredible. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you After, know what's crazy is is sorry to interrupt you, but you know today is a Monday, and I always tell everybody, right? Mondays you got to set the tone for the rest of the week, right? Mondays mean the most, especially with work on your mindset. Did you know that most heart attacks occur right Monday mornings? So it's just like it, it goes to a whole different perspective on how you look at things differently. You know, start absolutely. focusing on your your health, your mindset, embracing Mondays. That's going to be an awesome day instead of dreading it you'll probably be less likely to have a heart attack, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so Santo, he's um, has gone through the transformation again. He just started. Uh, so after being back uh, one week, he's lost a pound and a half. Um, and he's back on uh, the right track, ready for the journey. Yeah. Just to piggyback on what you just said, Coach Joe, it also, it makes your Sundays better too, because you don't have that Monday dread, you're ruining your Sunday. So it just kind of has a double win. You know what? I still, I personally dread the weekends, man, just because like, <laughs> I love my, my, my workflow Monday through Friday, right. With like, you know, Oakley and daycare, my wife's at work and everything like that. I love that. You know, I'm, I'm in the zone, man, but obviously the weekends it's, it's, it's about having that balance, you know, the family life, you know, but I know what you mean, though, because when you love what you do so much, it's just like it, it takes it over, you know? Jimmy, Mike, one more, brother. All right. I got two real quick. Mike Berry, huge win. Uh, his son just told him he's down 12 pounds. That's awesome. His son is 13 years old also. I believe so. And then the last one I'll do, big winner of the week, is Brian Malcolm. He's down under 300 pounds. That's awesome, man. He's I don't know if I had a mold, a perfect client starting to pro, sure. I think he would be it. Like, For sure. Yeah, we're we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about him also, just because like, you know, where he started off with working out at home, right. Just doing some body weight exercises to now in the gym, right. Just a, I, I love that. Right. We'll just, we'll save that for later though, but guys, let's get started. You know, today's episode really is because of Brett, you know, reaching out to the community group, you know, asking about, us talking about a, a better mind muscle connection, you know, and I, I, it's a great question to ask. And I told Brett, we're going to need a whole podcast episode just to talk specifically about that. So uh, for starters, right. What is that mind muscle connection? Well, maybe you guys heard the phrase, right. You, you kind of just skim through life. Well, you can do the same thing with your workouts, kind of just show up, right. Not really go through, you know, just kind of going through the motions, but Maybe you're on your phone. Maybe your mind is elsewhere and you kind of just leave the gym. You're like, okay, well, hey, I'm happy I showed up, but you didn't really get the best workout that you could have been, you know? And so having that mind muscle connection is very important. So for example, let's say if I'm focusing on doing a bicep curl, I want to know specifically like, hey, as I'm doing this curl, I'm feeling the tension, you know, in my bicep because I'm activating the muscle fibers. And that's what you want. 
you don't want to just go ahead and go through the motions and not really activate the muscle fibers. We want to make sure we're activating the muscle fibers. You know, so our job in the gym is obviously to destroy the muscle. Everybody thinks it's to build it up, become stronger, leaner, everything like that. No, the goal in the gym is to destroy the muscle. It's through the recovery, the proper nutrition, the training, the everything else, right? That's what grows the muscle. That's what makes it bigger, stronger. And having that mind muscle connection is going to help us activate some more of those muscle fibers. So um, let's do this, fellas, right? Let's go into some, some quick tips on what could somebody do to activate, right? Have more of a mind muscle connection. Um, I, I like to do this, honestly, personally. When I get to the gym, I focus on the first maybe like five to six reps, okay, is really just going slow. So for example, let's say, I don't know, a, a machine fly, for example, um, for your chest. I like to, you know, lower the weight and just go really nice and slow. Activate that muscle. As I'm going there, also, I might squeeze it a little bit more. It might be called like for some other people, like a warm up set. But uh, to me, it's just that mind muscle connection set where I'm focusing on, okay, hey, I'm training my, not only my mind, but also my body. Like, hey, here's the muscle that we're going to be working on next. So I like going, you know, for the first few reps of that first set, nice and slow, squeezing, trying to get that mind muscle connection, a little bit time under tension as well. Um, Mark, what about you, brother? What would you say is a good tip? Uh, a couple things. Uh, one is to actually like focus mentally on the muscle that you're working. So like, there's been studies that say that just by, you know, putting your attention on that particular muscle that you're working, it helps to, uh, you know, see more growth in that muscle because you're making sure you're activating it. Um, also, like, you know, a lot of people like, you know, mirrors in the gym. But honestly, if you're going for the mind muscle connection, it's better to focus on getting that feeling in that muscle rather than kind of looking at yourself in the mirror. Um, so really just focus. And before you even start, just visualize the movement that you're going to be doing, um, you know, whatever that exercise is, and visualize that that particular muscle is being engaged. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy, what about you, brother? I mean, there's there's so many tips here, man. There's yeah, a, there's a bunch of different things that you know we can do. Yeah, I do both of the ones you guys have said. Uh, you know, I start out with a lighter weight and go slow, and I find my mind wandering. If I do, I refocus, think about the muscle I'm training you know, and get back into it. But another good tip is, you know, feeling the muscle, like the ones you can, like if you're doing a, that you keep put your hand on your muscle and feel it that way it's connecting to your mind because it's in your hand. Absolutely. So that's a good tip. I, I love that tip, man. Just because like, it, it's just like what coach Mark said also, like you, you have that connection, right. And especially with you talking about the, the physical attribute of actually feeling the muscle, like, so let's say a dumbbell crossover, right? Like as I'm doing this and anybody can do this at home also, right? They're just moving from one arm to the other, right? Uh, just taking your arm, moving it from one position to the next, but putting your hand on your chest, you can feel your chest, you know, mm -hmm. kind of expand a little bit. You're, you're engaging with it. Um, it's very hard to train your back, right? In the gym and having that mind muscle connection. Personally, I'll ask my buddy like, hey man, do you mind touching my lats, right? Like my lower lats, if I'm doing a row, right? Or maybe my upper lats a little bit on my back. If I'm doing like, let's say a lat pull down, just so once again, he's feeling it. And then mentally I'm like, all right, he's touching my back, right? Thinking about my back now. Other things also like drop sets, supersets, you know, that's huge when it comes to making adjustments. Um, I, I love supersets, right? That's the, the bulk of like my training. I don't really do straight sets. I always do supersets. And I like that specifically because I feel like I'm taxing more on that muscle that I'm trying to work. So for example, let's say, you know, pec deck fly, you know, with the machine and then immediately go into simple like push-ups even, you know? Mm -hmm. And in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, like taxing the muscle before even training it is a great way to get that mind muscle connection. You know, a lot of guys think you got to, you know, lift heavy and that's, that's great, right? That's what we're going to talk about next, right? Progressive overload, but also like, think about this, maybe if we're trying to work out our biceps for that day. Um, or whatever, like we want to get more of a connection with our biceps. We've been lacking that. What about going up to the dumbbell rack, picking out some light weights and just for two minutes straight, literally just doing those curls, you're going to get that blood flow. You're going to get that feeling. And when that blood flow goes into there, right, that's where you're going to get the mind muscle connection truly from. You guys have anything else that you guys want to share about that? No, I think, I don't think so. I covered it, yeah. Yeah. I think also like, you know, this is what we're going to talk about next, but progressive overload, 
You know, that's one of the biggest attributes to, you know, having that mind muscle connection, really pushing yourself because, you know, progressive overload. So if you're a brand new client that's listening in on this and you want to know the best way to maximize, you know, your workouts, whether it's at home with or without equipment, whether it's at the gym, focus on progressive overload. And we're just going to talk about that. So uh, the importance, I guess, of what progressive overload is, it's, it's getting you to progress. <laughs> it's in the name. It's pretty simple. You know, we can't just go our whole entire life, right? Let's say benching 200 pounds. Eventually, we're just going to continue to go through the motions of benching out 200 pounds. Eventually, we're going to hit that big stall, that big plateau, right? Where it's just the same old, same old. Your body, but also your mind is kind of used to it. You know, think about it. Your first time benching 200 pounds, if let's say it's very hard for you to lift, you're going to activate more muscles, right? It's a whole different connection. But if it's your 200th time benching 200 pounds, like you're just going through the motions, you're like, yeah, it's just another day right? Like you could be thinking about something else rather than, holy cow, this bar might slam on my chest. I might not be able to get it up, you know? So just focusing on that progressive overload really helps out tremendously. And when it comes down to progressive overload, let's do this because there's three, you know, coaches here. Let's go over the three different types of progressive overload because I don't want people thinking that you need to just lift heavier week after week. You physically can't, right? Like there's going to be a certain time where you're going to hit that threshold, you don't see somebody starting off, you know, benching, you know, 100 pounds when they're 15 years old and then they're in their 50s, right? Benching 1,000 pounds. Like, no, like, even though he benched every single week, they're eventually going to hit that threshold, right? The human, you know, body's only capable of doing so much. The mind is limitless, right? Limitless, but the body, different story, okay? So, with that being said, three different types. First one I'll talk about, which is just increasing the amount of load and that is by increasing your you know how much weight that you're adding on so let's say the first week for example let's say we have you know dumbbell chest press you know uh three sets eight to 12 reps let's say that um i don't know i'm stuck at 80 pounds right and i can't get it for let's say more than 10 reps okay the best thing that you should do if you want to focus on progressive overload, specifically with increasing the amount of load, so increasing more weight, is say, okay, hey, I got into the rep ranges of eight to let's say 12. I've been stuck at, let's say, these 80 pounds for 10 reps. Let's maybe increase it to 85 pounds. And even if we get eight reps, that's A-OK. -okay. Shoot, even if we get five reps, that's A-OK. -okay. We're training the body differently, right? We're trying our hardest to progress with that. And then maybe, you know, those last remaining reps, we grab a lighter way to kind of tax out the muscle. So that's one way is obviously doing it. And probably the best way is just increasing the amount of weight. But let's say if you can't do that week over week, Mark, what do you think somebody else should do to still focus on progressive overload if they can't increase the weight? So if you can't increase the weight either because you physically can't, or maybe you're working at home, you just don't have the weight. Um, the other option is volume. So um, basically you're going to do more reps, uh, you know, in that given uh, set so that um, you're lifting more weight over the course of the workout because you are doing, you know, more, like if you're lifting, you know, like you, you said the 200 pounds, let's say, um, you're doing 200 pounds more times. So it's a more total volume of weight that you're moving. And that's going to uh, give you overload in the total weight that you're moving throughout the exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Either just adding one more set, adding in a few more reps. It could be anything, right? Just more volume. And then Jimmy, what's the last thing that somebody can do? If let's say, you know, they, they just, they don't want to be at the gym, just doing bench press, right. For an hour long straight, right. To add in more <laughs> volume. What is something else that they can do to also just focus on, um, something to continue to progress. Decrease the amount of time between sets. It's perfect. So if you usually, you know, do 90 seconds, make it 60, okay. uh, you know, play around with the time. And, you know, that way you're, you know, really exhausting that muscle more. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself now, or you can do, let's say a superset or something like that, but just decrease, decreasing, right. Minimizing the amount of time in between working that muscle again. So guys, these are all different types. Don't think you got to be, you know, macho Joe and lift heavy every single week. Like, trust me, right. From personal experience, I don't really even lift that heavy. Okay. I try my best to focus on progressive overload, but eventually get to a point where, 
you know, you like doing on more volume, right? Or maybe one day, right? You just want to focus on taxing muscle a little bit more, decreasing the rest, right? And then other days I wake up, I feel great, right? I want to go, I want to lift heavy, right? I want, I want to progress, you know, chase those PRs. So go off of how you feel, right? For that day, for that workout. I always say like this, I think I actually talked about it recently on a, a, one of our weekly uh, Zoom chats was, if you find like, let's say an exercise that you're doing there in the gym for that set workout, and you're really enjoying it, you're really activating the muscles, like you feel it. And let's say there's another exercise for that set muscle group, and you don't feel it as much, or it just makes you feel uncomfortable. Guess what? Stop doing that and just go right back to the other one. You know, plain and simple, add on some more sets, add on some more reps, whatever the case may be, you're getting that mind muscle connection, stick with that. I think a lot of people think like they need to do all these different varieties and different things inside the gym and whatnot you don't right plain and simple um there's hundreds of guys and obviously you guys know this as coaches where guys are on our training program and they work out at home you know some of these guys don't even have equipment but yet they're still able to progress and burn that body fat and um it just goes to show you like the simple movements when you start training your body effectively um that's what's going to give you the roi that you're looking for and let's actually talk about that you know let's talk about how to train your body properly, right? Whether you're at gym or whether you're at the home. Um, let's go into a few things like this. Mark, let's start off with you, brother. Uh, for somebody that's, let's say, they, they, they're they somebody from the outside listening in and you know, they don't know how to work out, um, they don't really do anything active. And the reason why I'm picking you up first is because this was kind of like you, man. Your oh, whole transformation was about this. And you can talk a little bit about your transformation because that was you, man. And you, you, you learned how to do all this in a way where it doesn't just fit your body type and your goals with helping you lose over 90 pounds of fat, but also schedule as well. Why don't you tell everybody, like, what are some tips here and what should somebody focus on when it comes to, you know, training their body properly? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, first of all, um, sustainability is key in, in all of this. So, you know, the first thing is find a workout that you like doing and a schedule that works for your lifestyle. You know, for me, um, you know, prior to being a full-time athletics coach, you know, I was going to the office, working out in the evenings just fit my lifestyle better. Now, you know, that I'm um, fortunate enough to be working from home, um, you know, working out in the mornings works better. So it's all about, you know, fitting that into your lifestyle. Neither one of them is, you know, they, they both have their, their positives and their negatives. And so they balance out in the end and it's really about which one you're gonna keep going. Um, try and work out each muscle type like twice a week. Um, but you know, in the beginning, you know, you talked about my transformation in the beginning, I started off with almost nothing. I had, you know, very light dumbbells and one kettlebell and, you know, that was enough to get me going, get me moving, get me moving some weight. And from there, you know, I kind of caught the bug, you know, I, I built it up from there, went to the adjustable bench, you know, dumbbells, eventually now I have the rack, but, um, yeah. But each step of the way, it was a learning process. You know, each each step I was learning, you know, those movements, I was learning the combinations of exercises that made sense and learning how to fit, you know, the, those changes into what goes on day by day in my life. And, um, and yeah, I would say, you know, the key to all of it was like, for me, once I, you know, upgraded to the adjustable bench, like a light went on and it was like, I love this, um, you know. Yeah. So when you find that thing that you love doing, stick with it, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, as long as you're moving, active, getting some exercise in, do what works for you. Yep. I love that. Your post inside the community group also, you said, boy, I'm going to be feeling this workout, right? Oh. It just also goes to show you that like, it, it never stops, right? There, there's, you, there's always going to be times where somebody's going to throw a curveball your way or like an intense workout where you're still challenged, right? In the midst right. of it. And um, I love it. Jimmy, let's go to you, right, on how to train your body properly. And if you remember, man, our discovery call, right, somebody that hasn't worked out in, what, two plus years, and you're like, I want to work out every day. I'm like, hey, slow your roll there, brother. Like, <laughs> let's start off small, man. Let's walk before we run. Why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, how to train your body properly, you know, for anybody kind of listening in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was, you know, anxious to get going, but you have to, you know, slow into ease into it. Yeah. I mean, just. Because how many guys out there, how many times, even I've done it before, you go to the gym your first time, you kill it. And then the next day you're like, oh, my God, I can't move. I'm done. This is it. 
<laughs> it's it's the dom, the delayed onset muscle soreness. And if yeah, you my know, legs have it right that, now today. Oh my gosh, it's brutal. <laughs> but anyway, I can't tell you how many times when I'm at the gym, I you know usually when you go to the gym the same time you see the same people. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many guys I see do the same exact workout. Yeah, you know, with the same exact weight, the same exact way. They'll get up, they'll walk around for ten minutes, and then do it. And you know, good, they're working out, but you're never going to see progress. You're you're not going to see progress doing things that way. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to change it up. You have to like we talked about the, you know, changing the time, the different things to do with progressive overload. But I know, you know, I'm a guy. I'm a guy who likes to lift weights and I like to lift heavy weights, but I'll tell you the hardest workouts I've done is when you you've made my workouts volume workouts mm -hmm. and it's good to do that, to switch it up. I mean, they completely kill me. Yeah. The did volume you like workouts. German volume training that we did that one? Oh, I, I hated it, but it was, <laughs> I mean, I hated it, but I loved it. You know, like it was, it was really hard, but after the workout, you know, it just, you know, after you have a good workout, that feeling you get. But I hated it, but loved it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we talked a little bit about Brian Malcolm right in the beginning. I, I want to bring it back to him because, you know, we talked about being like this all-star client, right? And it's just literally how do you become an all-star client? You just listen to me and the coaches. We tell you to do something, just be open-minded, do it, right? And then the second thing, uh, just constant communication, right? Tell us the good, the bad, especially the ugly, and then lastly, the third thing is engage inside the community groups. And so Brian started off working out at home, you know, and now he's progressing. He's inside the gym and all this stuff. And this is what I want to know. You know, I want Brian to know. I want Brian to know. I want everybody to know whether you're a brand new Heartletics member or whether you are a um, somebody that's been working out for years and you're just tuning in for the podcast because you like that motivation, right? Simply understanding this. Do what you enjoy, right? Mark, you said it, right? Do what you can be consistent with. Jimmy, you say it all the time to have success on this program. Just show up, you know. Find something. Mark, you mentioned train the muscle group twice a week, right, bare minimum. I absolutely love that. We talked already about progressive overload. In another episode, I talked about, you know, um, how to train the body, body properly, the RP scale, different things like that, rep ranges, et cetera. But what I want everybody to really understand is focus on what you enjoy doing. As long as you're head, like, you know, training each muscle group at least two times per week, if you can focus on progressive overload, awesome. But do it in a way where it focuses and it makes sense for your schedule. You know, don't ever say like, oh, I'm really hungry. Right? I see this all the time with the New Year's resolution. And this is why 77% of people fail at making their, you know, achieving their New Year's resolutions. And they dive headfirst in a dozen donuts, right? By February. It's because... They set themselves up for failure, you know, focus on your schedule, focus also on your body type. Meaning if somebody tells you that squats and deadlifts are amazing compound exercises, you should definitely be doing them. Well, guess what? That's hundred percent true. But what's wrong about that is you don't have to do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. Speaking from somebody that's in his thirties that has had multiple back injuries, right? I don't squat. I don't deadlift sure. Right. I got chicken legs maybe because of it, you know, but at the end of the day, I'll say it like this, what's worse, right. Having chicken legs or me not doing our WWE SmackDown with my son wrestling because he's into that because my back hurts and I can't get off the ground. Right. So like a lot of guys that we coach, you know, they're in their forties, their sixties, you know, past and current injuries, maybe they have right struggling. Um, they feel unmotivated. They don't know what to do, whether it's at home or whether it's in the gym. And this is for everybody to hear me out. The training aspect, right? I'm, I'm going to see how good you coaches are when it comes to really listening to what I have to say. What I always say about the working out, the training. It's the sprinkles on the cake. That's it. It's the sprinkles. When you dive into the mindset, that's 90% of it, right? When you dive into the nutrition, that's 90% of it. The training aspect, that is literally the sprinkles, the icing on the cake. It is, if anything, right, to help you progress mentally, not just physically. Uh, to me, like I, I go to the gym to advance my mental muscles because I know for a fact I'm doing something uncomfortable and that is what's going to help me step outside my comfort zone because I did not feel like waking up out of a cold bed, 
right? Driving to the gym and then lifting some heavy weights. Like I'm not even awake yet, but at the end of the day, guess what? Like that's, what's going to push me mentally. And so for anybody outside, listening in, remember, here's the key on how to really train your body properly. Okay. Focus on something that you enjoy doing. Cause at the end of the day, if you hate doing, let's say burpees and jumping jacks and sprints, and let's say a coach is making you do something or some training program that you saw online with somebody's completely ripped and in shape and they're doing it doesn't mean that it's going to be sustainable for you. Do something that you can do for the rest of your life. Do something that you can stick with. Find something that works your body properly. We talked about, you know, training each muscle group twice a week, progressive overload, right? Find something that you, you know, obviously you can stay consistent with. It works best with your schedule. And that's really it when it boils down to you know, eventually though, somebody's going to hit a plateau. That's the inevitable, right? And I would say the biggest tips that maybe we can give is, Jimmy, would you say everybody should just go back and listen to the podcast that you and I talked about, you know, how to break through plateaus and improve somebody's metabolism? Absolutely. Great. Some great stuff in there. Yeah. It's probably the best way for anybody that struggles with a plateau is to just, you know, watch and listen to that episode. And to give you a summary, yeah, it's, it's mainly about nutrition with metabolism, but any kind of plateau, right? It's all about just making a few small differences, a few small adjustments, plain and simple. And that episode goes into more detail about it. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is don't get discouraged, you know? Maybe uh, you're stuck, right? And you can't hit a PR or something like that. You can't progress to that next weight. Maybe you're stuck with that body fat percentage. It's just not, you know, adjusting, you know, week over week. What would you say, right? Let's do this as some value points as we finish things up. Mark, we'll have you go first and then Jimmy and I'll wrap things up. What would you say to, let's say that somebody is a client, right? They, they sign up for our coaching program and they're trying their hardest to progress and they're just stuck right now. What would you tell them as some, words of motivation, wisdom, and some actionable steps to maybe help them, you know, get right back on track. Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, you can't rush things, right? So if you are lifting a certain weight, you know, regularly, and you're kind of just able to do that, and, you know, maybe you're just not ready for that next weight yet, and that's okay. You know, keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Maybe a little bit, a little, you can add some uh, volume to it, like we talked about before. And then eventually that'll build you up to be ready for that next weight. Also, I found too, like there were times when, you know, I was so excited to get a PR, right. And I just kind of ran in there into, you know, doing something. I just hadn't set myself up properly as far as like positioning form. Cause you know, I was just like, you know, let's go, let's do this. And I couldn't do it. And then I slowed myself down and focused on, you know, making sure I was in the right form position, you know, support. And then sure enough, you know, the weight went up. So, you know, obviously, you know, make sure you're not rushing yourself both, you know, that you're not ready for the PR period, or if you are ready, you know, make sure you're not rushing yourself to do it, that you've got the form in place and all of that. And you're, you know, actively, you know, doing that muscle memory connection that we talked about and really feeling, you know, so that you can get that PR. Yeah, that's good, man. That's golden. Jimmy, what about you, brother? That was pointing to this. Consistency <laughs> is key. Be consistent. That's show, right. show up. Just don't give up show up, be consistent, do some things that make you uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And keep at it. It, it, That's it, man. Uh, At the end of the day, there's always going to be roadblocks, right? But it's all about taking detours, right? Not, you know, going backwards. And as long as you continue to progress, right, you eventually break through that plateau. And here's my actionable advice, right? And this is going to close things out for today's episode, right? If you are a new client, right, and or let's say you're any kind of client, right, within Heartletics, maybe you've been on the training program for two years, maybe you've been on it for two weeks, it does not matter at all, right? If you're listening to this episode, here's your CTA, your call to action. Go inside the community group. I want you to really sit down and think, right, first and foremost, before you make this post, what is something that you want to achieve? Not something that's easy, right? Something that you want to progress with, right? Like, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll actually make the first one when I get done with this. I want to bench 315 for three reps, right? Like I can get that one rep, two and a half if I got a spotter, right? But like 315, like I want to get that like fluid, okay, Uh, for three reps. So I'm going to go inside the community group. I'm going to make a post. I'm going to tag everybody. And this is probably the most actionable advice I can give to anybody inside of the Herletics, you know, uh, coaching program. Utilize the community groups, reach out in there. There's hundreds of guys, dozens of coaches, reach out there in, for support, for guidance. If you're struggling, if you, you have to get through a plateau, whatever the case may be, 
ask away, utilize that group as like your family, your threshold, because there's so many people that's going to give you so many different recommendations and responses. And that's when the coolest slash unique things about our coaching program, it's not a one size, oh, you have to do this. It's like, no, hey, this works great for this person. Try this. Oh, if it did it, okay, try this, then this works great for them. And we figure out those missing pieces of the puzzle. So I'm going to make a post, right? And I encourage anybody else, right, that listens to this episode, go inside the community group, tag everybody, and just your call to action is to make a post just, you know, saying like, hey, this is the PR that I want to try to get, plain and simple. And let's do our role, our job as coaches, as, you know, members, as this family that we build it up to be, to hold that individual, you know, accountable to make sure that they achieve their goals. And when they do, let's celebrate the crap out of it because, that's awesome that this person decided to reach out for help. Hey, they spoke into existence. I'm going to hit this. And then guess what? We get to see that eventually happen. And we're going to you know, celebrate that. And that's going to be a great feeling. What do you guys think about that? Is that a good uh, CTA? 100%. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait yeah. to see what's going to get posted. Yeah, I love that. Well, guys, let's wrap things up here as we're cutting things to an end. Um, for everybody listening in, remember, if you're a brand new client, you just got signed up. Uh, there's a lot of different good golden nuggets in this episode. But just remember, right, if we had to summarize everything, the icing on the cake really is the workouts. You know, the nutrition, the mindset, that's everything. And if you're somebody that's struggling and you have been and you don't know how to break through any kind of plateaus, go listen to the episode that Coach, and Jimmy, Coach Jimmy and I did, right, on how to break through, you know, and improve your metabolism, break through those fat loss stalls. It is a really golden episode. And then... um if you're somebody from the outside and just kind of listening for some motivation, hey, do me a favor, go to heartletics.com and you know check out some of the other advice and maybe the free fat loss guide in there because we have tons of different things that anybody can get value from. Guys, this has been you know Coach Joe with Coach Jimmy, Coach Mark with heartletics.com, and I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you guys got any value, all I recommend and you know ask, I'll be super grateful if you guys were able to do this, is just maybe share this on your social media or share this with a friend or a loved one. With that being said, this has been the Coach's Corner, right, with heartletics.com. Peace out, Girl Scouts. See you, everybody.